As a member of the Hobart rowing team, I was out on the lake each and every morning, but I never stopped to think critically about the actual body of water on which I was rowing. So today, I'll go back to school with Professor John Halfman to study Seneca Lake aboard the William Scanling, a 65-foot research vessel. No, we're unbelievably unique in that we're probably the only um, undergraduate institution across the nation that has one of these boats. The primary function of the William Scanling is to allow students to research the physical, chemical, biological, and geological properties of our very own Seneca Lake. Where else do you get to go out on a boat once a week and sample stuff? You get the hands-on experience you really don't get anywhere else. From introductory to advanced level research, all sorts of science classes use the vessel. I bring my environmental geology class out here. I bring my limnology class out here. Um, when I start teaching environmental hydrology for upper-level geo students, I'll bring them out here. Last week we went out on eight of them <laughs> in the rain and everything else, in the rain and the wind. In other words, that really rainy Thursday, we were out here. <laughs> on Tuesday when it was really, really windy, we were out on um, not this boat, but the pontoon boat that I have. Limnology is a study of lakes and other freshwater bodies such as marshes, wetlands, streams, anything other than oceans. Now the limnology class is special. They come out um, all but maybe three or four left. Why do people study limnology? Because it's really cool. <laughs> Here, we're really lucky. We've got Seneca Lake, and it's one of the most unique Finger Lakes. Well, it is probably the most unique Finger Lake. Uh, it's the deepest, it's the most saline. Uh, there's a lot of cool geologic features below the lake that we get to look at. We do water quality testing, so you get environmental studies, you get hydrology. Uh, you can do sediment samples, sediment cores. What, what makes all the Finger Lakes very special to, to study is that um, within the 11 Finger Lakes here, there's a range of different um, water qualities, a range of different um, um, algal contents and other things. So you can then look at one lake and compare it to the next and try to differentiate what's causing that difference. You have an opportunity to go out on the lake and sample in different uh, sites, whereas if you didn't have a boat, you couldn't get samples in the middle of the lake. It's a lot of work, but it's fun. Professor Halfman, yeah. he's a wealth of knowledge. You know, you might see this guy, this big guy walking around campus, but he's one of the most friendly people I've ever met. You just really can't be intimidated by him. If you're interested in geoscience, go right up to him and talk to him. It's, he'll, he'll tell you how it is, and it's, it's really awesome. There's other places that might have a boat, um, but it's usually a tied to their graduate program. And, and to allow undergraduates on a boat like that never happens. Um, so this is unbelievably unique in that respect. Taking part in my very first limnology lab this afternoon taught me a lot. I learned that Seneca Lake was formed by Pleistocene glaciers 14,000 years ago and has a vast array of carbonates, shales, and halite evaporates. Well, I didn't so much learn all that as hear people say those words, but still, it was fascinating to take part in a living laboratory in our very own backyard. I spent my years as an English major rooting over text in the shadowy alcoves at the Blackwell Room, so it was certainly refreshing to jump aboard the William Scanling and get my hands dirty on Seneca Lake with the rest of the Hobart and William Smith students. Maybe in my next life, I'll be a geoscience major. <laughs>